I want to talk to you about another pressure. Uh, our government is not just printing the money. Somebody is on the hook for that money. And right now, it's the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is not part of the American government. It is the five largest banks in America. That's who the Federal Reserve is. And if you think the five largest banks are just going to take it and be left holding the bag, you're mistaken. Most people are aware, I hope, that the Federal Reserve and the government have pumped trillions of dollars into this economy just because of COVID. They've done it through a combination of things. Free cash provided by the government to individuals, free, remember that. Forgivable loans to businesses. Hundreds of billions in loan forbearance on mortgages, meaning you would have defaulted, but they said, no, hold off. Student and car loans forbearance as well. And a myriad of other spending that adds up northward of $12.4 trillion in direct COVID-19 stimulus and $19 trillion in total economic stimulus, including money that is not directly tied to COVID. A good deal of the deficit has been taken on by Uncle Sam, and it was directly financed by the Federal Reserve. So what does that mean? That means the Federal Reserve purchased themselves U.S. Treasury bonds, but they purchased them with bogus money. They printed the money, bought the bonds, and then put that on their records as, you know, okay, so we have these bonds as investments, but they don't want the investments. Listen to this. The Fed has usually held a small amount of Treasury bonds, around $220 billion in 2007 before the crash. However, after the crash of 08, the Fed's holdings of U.S. Treasuries went up to $4 trillion as the Fed printed currency to bail the big banks themselves out. Now, fast forward. The emergency of COVID-19, they have now purchased another $3.6 trillion in U.S. debt, giving Uncle Sam $3.5 trillion to spend however he wants. The net result is the Fed now carries over $7.5 trillion in U.S. bonds. That means the five biggest banks, you wonder, oh, the banks are too big to fail. Well, how come they keep getting bailed out? They're getting bailed out because they got a dirty little deal going on with the government. They're financing our politicians' debt. That's 25% of all of our debt held by those banks, and they bought it without ever coming to you. So we bailed out the, mer the mega corporations. We bailed out mortgage companies. We bailed out the banks. We bailed out the airlines, the cruise industries, college, U.S. consumers, small businesses via PPP, farms and ranches. Who's going to bail out the, the Fed? Believe it or not, there is a plan for this. But first, you have to get yourself into the mindset of a central planner. If you're a conservative, you, 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 you look at uh, the world differently. You look at it as individuals and individual ownership. But if you're a central planner, you don't. You see pools of capital. According to uh, Alan Greenspan in his remarks in 2005, pools of capital... That's all that money is, are pools of capital that add up to a whole. And that whole can be allocated as needed during times of crisis. What does that mean? I mean, I agree there's pools of capital. There's money in U.S. banks, bank accounts. There's money in the stock market. There's another pool of retirement accounts and pensions. But they're privately owned. And yes, they do add up to the whole economy. But the government doesn't have access to that. Oh, don't they? Statists see these pools of money as uh, untapped assets. The fact that it sits in your pension fund or your bank account doesn't matter. That's, an, that's a, a, an asset that can be tapped. 
for growth. If you think you own your money, think again. The bailout of the Fed. Currently, there are $9 trillion worth of pensions in the U.S., both public and private. That's the teacher's pension, the police, the firemen, the railroad workers, the plumbers, the carpenters, the blue-collar union pensions. The pensions allocate fund for investments to continue to grow to meet retirement benefits of the pensioners. So pension managers invest in stocks and bonds and mutual funds and real estate. Okay. They remember those pensions to be able to stay solvent need a return on their investments of at least 7%. Anything below 7% can cause the pension to collapse. As of the end of 2020, U.S. pensions held 15% of pension funds in domestic government bonds. Now, that includes local, state, and federal bonds. That's down. They used to put 31% invested in government bonds in 2008. But now only about 10% of U.S. pensions are really invested in government bonds, U.S. government bonds. It's around $900 billion or so. The reason why is because our government bonds only pay about 1% interest. So you're, you're 6% away from making enough money. So here's how the bailout starts. Beginning now in 2022, the U.S. government is requiring U.S. pensions to reallocate investments requiring a minimum of 33% or one-third of all pension funds invested in government treasuries. To meet the requirement, pensions are going to be forced to liquidate stocks, real estate, and other investments and shift over to United States government bonds. Here's the kicker. As part of the emergency powers activated by the executive order because of uh, COVID-19, the Fed, unbeknownst to almost everyone, was authorized to sell bonds on the open market for the first time. They could only do that to banks before. So they have all these treasuries sitting around. Who are they going to sell them to? The banks don't want to buy them. They are the banks. Now, because of the emergency, they're allowed to sell those bonds to anybody. Well, guess who the Fed can now sell them to? The pension funds. This is a dirty, dirty, dirty deal. So how does the government get the pensions to play along? I mean, you're going to lose money, right? They know they're going to collapse if they can't get a 7% return. So what are they going to do? Easy. The United States government has the Benefit Guarantee Corporation, which is now like the FDIC except for pensions. So the United States government, remember I told you they would do this? Do you remember this? In like 2008, I said the government is going to bail the pensions out. Yes. The government now is on the line for all of the pensions. So if they don't make their return, don't worry. The government will pay for the pensions. We can't pay for Social Security, and they're taking on the union pensions. It's a nice shell game. Nine trillion dollars in U.S. guaranteed pensions, also pools of government, you know, that they could look in, you know, on their bail-in strategy. You have an IRA or a 401k. These are not part of the plan yet. How about a mortgage with home equity? Is that part of a pool that maybe they could access? Savings or checking account? Is that a pool of money that we could almost make these into derivatives? We're not going to actually take the money, but we're going to borrow against that money. Do you see what's going on? These types of required government bond purchases exist. This is not a new thing. It's just new to us. It's never happened before where you have a pension and you have to buy U.S. government bonds. Never happened before in the United States. It has happened uh, elsewhere. China. Venezuela. They have this program. The United States now has this program. What are you going to do with your money? We have plenty of money, but nothing our money can buy. Transitory inflation. 
fleeting, transitory, hyperinflation, according to Bank of America. What are you going to do? We go there next at the top of next hour. Do not miss today's show. I think it's critical that you listen to today's show. Um, And if you have to go someplace, you have to tune out now, uh, then listen to the podcast. Make sure you listen to the podcast and share this with any friend that you know actually cares about these things. This has nothing to do with politics. This has everything to do. Ronald Reagan talked about this day. As he was running up huge debt, he said, there's going to come a time when we're going to have to make choices and we're not going to like any of the choices. Well, I got news for you. We're past that now. We're past that. What's coming and how to prepare in just a minute.